Good afternoon, everybody. Mike Winkler here, and we are to talk about calculating the events per second rate in Q radar with the um, terribly um, appropriate subtitle of Why Is It So Difficult? This, ironically, is a little more difficult than we originally planned. I posted a video that this is a successor to a couple of weeks ago, and I've pulled down videos before as things become obsolete and times change. This one started such a gigantic discussion on events per second and how they're calculated, and there was indeed an error in my prior video to say that this is your revised and expanded answers to that, right? Because some of these things as time gone by has become a little more complicated and I just plain gave you an out of data answer. So let's get to how we do this correctly, okay? Um, before we dive into the math of it, I want to talk about how times they are a change in. Uh, Qradar traditionally has sold in events per second licensing. That is to say you would buy 2,500 or 5,000 or 100,000 events per second capacity put it on whatever hardware it is that you needed, and that was the amount of QRadar power you had, right? And you picked out your events per second. IBM is moving towards a model where they are selling per server licensing. Now, the vast majority of people are still on events per second licensing, right? But now there is an option that says, um, tell me the total number of servers in your environment, and then you can use however much QRadar you want, okay, based on the capacity of that hardware or virtual machine or hosting server or whatever. Okay, so this is one of these things that is changing. So this is gonna be a little bit of a diminishing solution set as EPS are gonna become less important as time goes by. Okay, what is the problem we are trying to solve? Um, sometimes we are hitting the hardware load, right? We are hitting the limit of what your hardware will handle and this will cause events to either buffer or drop and this is a problem, right? So we don't want to see the hardware limit hit and that's something we need to watch for. Um, sometimes we need to profile a log source and um, our friends over at uh, Cisco ASA or uh, Checkpoint or Palo Alto will throw so many more logs than we can get security value out of. A lot of the times we will need to go through and look at a log source and say, hey, I want this category of logs and not that category of logs. Um, and guys, if you look back at my, uh, my video channel, you're gonna see this five or six I've made in the last month about which logs we do want to gather. And sometimes we need to profile a log source so that we're gonna stay inside the license, inside the hardware capacity and give you the best value for your security intelligence time, right? But profiling that log source becomes a big deal. And the last is about hitting the, um, hitting the license, right? What I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, it costs you money if you hit the license. Um, and this can be a real problem, right? We're trying to avoid you hitting that license file. So this is my QRadar Deployment Intelligence, or QDI, right? This is a useful tool. It's in the App Store. If you haven't grabbed it, you totally should. It doesn't have much of an impact at all. It's one of the pretty light ones. To do the work we're doing here today, I'm going to pause it so uh, when we're looking at our graphics, they're not continually changing, right? I'm now going down to my License and Event Rate filter. Uh, we can remove these because at first glance, this doesn't look all that interesting. Um, that I can go through and it's like it's a question of um, I want to know my give back rate and my use rate. So I'm going to remove the processing limit, which is what my hardware is doing. I'm going to remove the license limit and license allocated, right? License allocated and license limit in this case are the same, but they might be different if you have unallocated licenses on your system, right? But that's a small point. But what you see here is the amount of EPS, and we're going to talk about the meaning of raw. Um, that you are licensed for. This is what's going against the license, and this is our blue lines up at the top here. Um, this graph is in the thousands, right? So uh, my not very busy demo server shows my peak is uh, 258 events per second, and this is a 24-hour window. It will tell you a lot about what's going on, right? And this is raw as is measured at the event processor, right? This is gonna get important later. Okay, and this is my license give back or the, what I'm not charged for. So the total number of events per second here, the total number of raw is here. Okay, so if you're looking for the numbers of what's going on in your system, this will give it to you in this one chart. It is continually updated and it's a 24 hour window. It's literally all built for you. Now you will notice that there is a license event rate give back chart right over here to the right. Also a perfectly good way to find this, right? Um, I only have one device, so that one's kind of dull to look at, but you can do that same thing where you can drop out the other factors of this graph to give you just the data you're looking for, okay? So if you're looking for a way to tell you're actually what's hitting the license event per second, 
and what's the give back or what you're not paying for. This is your best quick and dirty answer for a 24 hour window. So let's take a look at some of the terms here that get complicated and something that was out of date in the first version of this. So we have raw events and we have coalesced events inside QRadar, right? So raw events, and I looked at them first in events per second, peak one second raw. Now what this is, is every crazy piece of garbage, um, unfiltered, unaveraged, whatever, that shows any peak based on weirdness in your bandwidth, um, anything that could be happening. And it's useful from the point of view of mapping to a certain amount of hardware capacity, but mostly this just shows um, noise in the signal, right? So we don't necessarily really want to use that raw peak one second. What's going to be a better answer is if you look at that events per second raw average one minute. So this is going to take the kind of weirdness and line noise and the fact that you have chatter out of the equation. If we look at that in events per second raw average one minute. Okay, and you see from the frame on this, I use the old school dashboard and I just created this report, right? Um, this is mostly going to be your final answer, but I got a couple of things to other things I want to show you before we say final answer. Coalescence is where QRadar makes better use of the hardware. The license file is applied after raw events are calculated and before coalescence. And this is something I said backwards in the original video. So let's be clear. Events per second are calculated on raw events, not coalesced. Coalescence happens after. This is something where we'll create pointer files, right? So when you went to Google at 1202, 1206, and 1218, um, so that we create one event with three pointers, no data is lost. It just makes the engine work a lot less hard and saves us eight to 10% of storage, right? So coalescence makes QRadar more hardware efficient, but does not affect the license file, okay? That's kind of a big deal here, okay? so. Let's look at the model about how things work going on inside QRadar. Now, depending on the size of your installation, your event collector, your event processor, and your console might all be one box. You might have all processors with no collectors. There's a lot of ways you can have this laid out physically in terms of hardware, but an event collector is something that exists inside every event processor and sometimes we separate them out for bandwidth management reasons, okay? So everybody has collectors and processors, even if they're all inside the same box. Normally, we don't have to draw a point this fine, but this kind of makes a big difference as far as license management goes. So I have log data that hits the collector. The collector does its thing, goes through to the event processor, okay? Um, there are times where QRadar talks to QRadar. This is where QRadar logs to itself, right? So if you're looking for how well the application server QRadar is doing, you'll notice it's logged to QRadar. You will also notice that certain applications, most notably user behavioral analytics, throw a bunch of log files. These do not apply to your events per second. They go to what is called give back or licenses you are not charged for, okay? That's kind of a big deal and it'll make real sense here in a minute. So if I go through and on the event collector, and I'll show you this in just a second how this works, I create routing rules and I add things to give back. So I can say if I have a particular event type that's coming from a firewall and I don't really care about it, right? I don't care about DNS closed, something. Um, I can create a routing rule at the event collector, and I'll show you how to do this, that is going to add to your give back or essentially not count against your license. There's a couple of subtleties to it that we could get into that I don't think matter here, but any event that is QRadar talking to itself or any event that is removed in a routing rule at the collector do not become part of that raw data, right? So the term raw is a bit of a misnomer at this point, but it is the name of it. So after we've applied those routing rules, right, and the event processor has talked to itself, we have a number of givebacks. Okay, it's going to be a, a certain static number. Um, I think it's like 150 events per second of just QRadar running with a bunch of apps on it but it could be a bunch higher depending on what's going on. From raw events, we calculate that license limit, okay? To be super clear here, raw events minus give back equals the license limit, okay? So this is, we calculate those raw events, we wanna use that per minute, not per second calculation, 
Um, and those minus the givebacks will give you your license limit, okay? It's after the license file is applied that we get our coalescence so that we can make the hardware work more efficiently, okay? This is one of those things that uh, you're probably gonna have to watch this six times because I had to watch it six times before I had it all figured out, but this is the process about which logs are and which are not going to the license and where we hit the coalescence point, which is after the license, and it just makes the hardware more efficient. Okay. Okay, guys, we are in my QRadar admin tab, and I want to draw your attention to the routing rules over here. So I'm going to click into this, and I prepared a routing rule, and we were setting up for this. Um, what these are are things we will drop at the event collector, right? So in this case, I set up a rule, I called it drop one, that I only cared about a specific event name. And I'm going to drop this at really specifically the collector. What this does is this takes this and it essentially adds it to your license give back. And I found some real precise language when I was asking some questions about this. It's not as if this is not, if this is removed from the events that go against license. It's more as if the license is raised by this number. Okay, so this is where the definition of raw starts to get a little soft. If we use a routing rule and we drop events at the collector using a routing rule like I did right here, right? And we can do that by pretty well any criteria that you feel like. If we use a routing rule to do this, this goes to give back, okay? And it increases your give back numbers. So if you want to, you can go through and you can set up um, longer term graphs to say, I want to see my events per second raw averaged one minute over 30, 60, 90 days. Now, this is a test box that you can see was uh, off for several days here, actually almost two weeks. But you are seeing that my average one minute events per second raw is oh, 180, right? Um, obviously rather low there, but this is a nice quick and dirty number if you want those 30 day numbers. Now here is a little bit of a caution on this. All of the math and mechanisms I've talked about here are QRadar 731 or later, right? Things ran a little differently before 731. Now, at the time of this recording, uh, QRadar 741, or roughly four versions later, um, is the newest, coolest build. But if you are running before 731, these are not going to run exactly the same way, okay? So uh, take this with a bit of caution. And if you're before 731, you need to update anyway, okay? Looking at uh, EPS by log source, right? Because sometimes this is interesting. It allows you to find the problem is I can go through and this is inside the um, event viewer. I clicked uh, search, new search, and I have grouped by log source, peak EPS rate, custom, that's just what it's called. And then I added a bunch of characteristics I like. Ordered by count, okay? The rate limit I just left to the default. But what this gives me is the peak events per second by log source. So peak as defined in this context is in the amount of time that has gone by since the last time you restarted the event processor service, which most of the time means a major update or that you restarted the server, this is the highest volume of events per second that have ever gone through the Q radar. This is what we use for a lot of our hardware planning, right? This is what we do um, when we want to um, figure out you know, how much the machine is working. You will notice I set this for table view because I just think that is the most useful view. Okay, so um, it, it, in my case, sorry, demo server, health metrics is number one. You are gonna find your firewalls, uh, your checkpoints, your net screens, your palos, whatever you like, are gonna be uh, by a mile the most uh, events per second here. But if you were looking at the high, looking for the highest EPS rate that ever hits your Q radar, Okay, this is how you calculate that. Another thing here that I wanted to talk to you about the, uh, the give back screen. Now I gave you a couple of good methods for hitting the license give back. And sometimes you wanna do something a little different than that and that 24 number is not gonna work for you, right? So what this is is an AQL query that I dumped into Pulse Dashboards. And it's giving me um, a single very large number of um, 
what my license give back rate is. And we can create that as a table and use that exact query. And that's going to give you the give back number if you want that running for a longer period of time. So guys, I realize some of this has been quite the complicated and it's more in the technical weeds than I normally get on some of these things. But this should be a way or a couple of good ways for you to be able to calculate your events per second rate, your give back rate, your coalesced rate, and your peak rate, right? So these are the numbers that should be able to allow you to um, come up with any of those values you need to, to do all of your proper planning inside QRadar. Uh, guys, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I know I have a small number of very loyal listeners. Um, but if there's any kind of question on this, please reach out to me. Pretty sure we've got this one right at this point. But if I've missed something or there's something that's unclear, let me know. Thanks, guys.